Good morning, Connection. Kyle Sunderland coming at you with another round of Devos. Today we begin our journey in the book of Exodus. Look forward to going through it with you. Um, don't want to waste too much time setting it up, but um, before we begin, let us just pray and ask God to come into this time. So if you would, please bow your heads with me. Father God, thank you for bringing us together once again to go through one of your books in the Bible. Um, it's always encouraging when we can come together as believers and dig and dive in deeper into your word. Father, as we go through this first chapter and start the second, we learn about the birth of Moses, Father. I ask that you just let it resonate with us on the plan that you had already foreseen with everything that was going on, that you still found a way for Moses to be born and to actually, or to eventually even grow up into a man that he became. Um, you have the plan, and I just want, and I pray that everyone here listening and diving in today, uh, they know that there's a plan for their life as well. So, Father, open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to receive your word today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today, we will be going, or doing chapters 1, 1, and going to chapter 2, verse 10. So if you have your Bible or your app handy, uh, please open it up and let us begin. <clears throat> Exodus 1. These are the names of the son of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob, each with his household. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, Asher, all the descendants of Jacob were 70 persons. Joseph was already in Egypt. Then Joseph died and all his brothers and all that generation. But the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong so that the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread, and the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves, and made their lives bitter with hard service, in mortar and brick, and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra, and the other Pua, "When you serve as a midwife to the Hebrew women." and see them on the birth stool. If it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. Now, the interesting thing here on why they didn't fear the daughters, obviously, is because Pharaoh was worried that as the boys grew up, became teens, and then eventually men, that they would rise up with the enemies of Egypt and overthrow them. So he was afraid. And he figured the best way to do, get rid of that fear, was just to kill all sons. It's pretty harsh, but it's not the last time this uh, type of process comes into play. So, anyway, <clears throat> the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the mid midwives and said to them, why, do you, why have you done this and let the male children live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with, with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is to be born, every son that is born, that is born to the Hebrews, you shall cast into the Nile, and you shall let every daughter live. So the midwives, they flat out lied to the king. Um, it wasn't so much that the Hebrew women uh, gave birth quickly. They were just, they, they straight up lied. They wanted, um, they, they feared God more than they feared the king of Egypt. 
So they came up with a quick lie and uh, the pharaoh believed it, which is good. But ultimately, the pharaoh said, you will cast all sons after birth, you'll just cast them into the Nile. So now we are in chapter 2, and this is the birth of Moses. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it daubed it with bit, nah, bitumen and pitch, but she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the riverbank. And, as, and his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. So this child that was born survived, lived to be three months old when his mother fashioned a basket and the bitumen and pitch basically it helped it so it would float. Um, and just sealed it all up, made it airtight, kind of like a boat in a way. I guess this is the best way I could put it. But the mother let the child just sit in the reeds. But the, her daughter decided to watch over to see what happened. But this is what, like I said, God has a plan. So now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her young woman walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant, some servant woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me. I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. So this is the part where I said God has a plan. What is the irony of it that Moses' sister was watching by the river to see what would happen to him? And then when Pharaoh's servant, or Pharaoh's daughter's servant, found the basket, Moses' sister is right there to say, should I go and find someone to nurse? Well, ultimately, Moses' mother was nursing for a baby boy still. And the great thing about that whole process is not only is she getting to help nurse her son, she was also getting paid for it. She was getting wages for doing that. So it was one of those uh, processes where God stepped in tenfold. He not only allowed uh, the safety and security and uh, Moses to be to have his life, he wasn't drowned. He was able to live. He was able to uh, be with his mother. His mother was actually getting money that she wasn't receiving before, so it kind of helped her, her livelihood. But ultimately, Pharaoh's daughter takes Moses as her own and introduces her or introduces Moses to the Pharaoh. So that sets up the next part of the story, which you'll hear tomorrow. But Moses being born of Hebrew birth and then being raised in Pharaoh's house. God has a plan. So I ask, I'll ask you, do you know what God's plan is for you? Are you still trying to figure that out? Do you feel that there is a call on your life? If so, do you know how to go about achieving that call or answering that call? If not, reach out. Reach out to any of us that have done the, uh, the devotional series in the past or anybody who's gonna be doing it in the future. Reach out to the pastors. If you feel there's a call on your life and you want uh, someone to listen or someone to help maybe get some guidance or walk alongside you with that journey, please reach out. That's what we're here for. Uh, the cr Christian faith, the Christian, the just Christian, uh, is it, nah, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. The Christian faith is a community. It's not just a community, it's a family. And we want to be there to help the family 
grow. We want to help the family succeed. We want to love on the family. That's ultimately what it's about. So I would be more than willing to uh, listen to anything you have to say. If you're still questioning what that plan God has for you, I would love to walk along that journey with you. So as you go forward today, the rest of your day, or whatever time of the day it is you're watching this Devo, pray about that. Pray about, or pray that God shows you his plan for your life, that he shows up and lets you know what it is that your purpose is. Is it a purpose to, uh, uh, purpose to do something at work that's out of the ordinary? Uh, is it a purpose to help out with the church? Um, is your purpose just to raise a family? What is God's purpose for your life? If you don't know that, now is a, as good a time as any to question what that purpose is. So before I ramble anymore, I'm getting tongue-tied. I just want to say thank you for listening. I look forward to the next time I uh, get to talk to you. Um, until then, God bless.